for PsychCentral.com, I'm Summer Bretsky, and yes, I have panic disorder. So today I am here to bring you six ways to distract yourself from panic. Now obviously, over time, you don't want to be distracting yourself from panic for every attack that you have. You know, over time you want to learn cognitive behavioral techniques to help you cope with the feelings and the sensations and you know, get yourself through them. Um, but distraction is sometimes necessary, especially, you know, if you're just getting started dealing with panic, um, or if you're panicking in a situation that you, you really need to get through, like, you know, driving home from work or something where you can't easily pull over. Um, sometimes you just need to focus on something else, get your mind off the attack to get it to calm down a little bit. So over time, obviously, you want to desensitize yourself to those uncomfortable physiological sensations of panic. But for now, here are six distraction techniques that'll help you get through an attack. If you begin to panic at your desk at work, for example, take a detour. Go somewhere else. You may want to go outside and hang out here until panic has subsided. But when the panic dies down, be sure to return to your original location, the place where the panic began, whether that be at your desk or in your car or wherever. Because if you continue to avoid the place where panic began, you're going to interpret that place as a panic trigger. And it's going to make it more difficult for you to return to your desk or your car the next day. The second thing you can do is some simple math. You can add up numbers for whatever's available. You know, add up numbers on license plates, add up the digits in your phone number, um, mentally recite an easy chunk of that multiplication table you learned in third grade, anything. I did a few biofeedback sessions when I was a grad student and just for fun, I decided to do some simple math problems while hooked up to the sensors that measured my heart rate, my skin conductance, and my hand temperature. And even just 30 seconds of simple math calmed me down significantly by about 15 beats per minute. Third, try playing a very simple word game. If you have an iPod Touch or an iPhone, you can try a low stakes word game like Moxie 2. It's this word game that presents you with letters and you get to make words out of those letters. And really there's, there's not too much in terms of scoring. There's no pressure, it's not timed. So it can be really relaxing and distracting. Or you can always play that classic grocery store game where you think of something that you can buy at the grocery store that begins with the letter A, like Apple and then think of something that starts with the letter B, like bread, C, cilantro, D, dish soap, the list goes on and on till Z. And if you still don't feel calm enough by then, you can always repeat it. Number four, use water. Some people tell me that splashing their face with cold water helps to disengage their panic circuitry. For me, running my usually ice cold hands under warm running water can help. If you're near a freezer, holding an ice cube in your palm can distract you from the sensations of panic too. And of course, taking a few sips of water can be enough to distract you as well. Number five, take a photo. Not only does the process of aiming and shooting a camera distract you, but I often find the resulting photo to be a bit calming as well. It's an accurate representation of what's in front of you, unlike the inaccurate version of how we might interpret our surroundings when we're on the edge of panic. And in the long term, photographs of the locations where you've panicked can uncover panic trends that help you to identify triggers. Are all of your photographs of highway shoulders or locations over 10 minutes from home? Grocery stores, shopping malls. And finally, number six, fold some paper. You don't need to do any fancy origami here, but if you know how to fold a paper crane, then by all means, fold a paper crane. But just grabbing some scrap paper or an old receipt is enough. You can fold a simple fan, fold the paper in half multiple times until it's too thick to fold or make a paper airplane. Now, of course, not all of these distraction techniques are necessarily right for you. You know, if one of them happens to make you feel more anxious, like, you know, doing simple math problems, then by all means, don't do that. Don't use that as a technique to distract your, yourself from panic if you think it's going to make you panic more. 
So what I like to do is if I'm having a panic attack or just an episode of high anxiety that's very physically based, like, you know, rapid heartbeat, sweaty palms, the whole nine yards, then I like to do a mental exercise like, you know, the grocery store game or simple math or something like that, something that involves my brain. However, if the anxiety and panic that I'm experiencing is revolving around a thought that I can't get out of my head, then I like to do something physical like folding paper. And don't forget, it really is true. I am a real life bona fide panic attack sufferer. So I know how it feels and it's incredibly uncomfortable and I sincerely hope that you can use some of these distraction techniques to help yourself get through some very difficult situations.